If you want a device that has the most screen real estate because you need it to do a lot of work, or you don't want to lug around a tablet and a smartphone, you should definitely keep watching. Here on My Next Appliance, we've been picking apart 2013 flagship phones as they're announced from Apple, Google, Nokia, HTC, and Motorola. Use the links below to watch a different episode, or you can click the pop-ups if you're watching from a computer. Best of all, click subscribe with email notifications and follow on Twitter for updates on new episodes. Episode 6 is about the largest cell phone company in the world. Samsung and the new... Wait, what is Samsung up to these days anyway? Well, Samsung has its hands in a ton of businesses. In tech, it's the largest TV manufacturer, the largest memory chip maker, and the second largest semiconductor chip maker after Intel. And just recently, Samsung passed Nokia to become the largest mobile phone maker in the world. With all this success in a lot of different areas, it can throw down big time in digital devices. And this episode is about... Wait, one more question. Since this is called Phone Wars, what's up with the lawsuits between Apple and Samsung? <clears throat> 16 months and a few injunctions later, a U.S. jury ruled in favor of Apple to the tune of over $1 billion. But you should really check out Chip Wars 5 for more info because this video is really about competitive innovation, not legal warfare. By the way, have you subscribed to the channel yet? Uh, let me get back to you. Anyways, as I was saying, this episode is about the Galaxy Note 2 which is actually the first mobile product announced after Samsung's billion dollar loss to Apple, and one of the few devices kept out of the lawsuit. Samsung sold over 10 million first-gen Galaxy Notes and plans to triple that rate in the first three months of this new launch. The most unique feature is the stylus, otherwise known as the S Pen. It doesn't require direct contact with the screen for input, and it allows you to preview what's inside an app without fully opening it. Out of the box, once you remove the S Pen from the keeper, it will automatically launch apps that let you write down stuff while on a phone call, write a command on the pad to send out a message, trace, clip, and send pictures or text, work on your handwriting skills, or add notes to the back of photos. But that's not all. Developers will also be able to create apps that take advantage of the S Pen in ways we haven't even thought of. Ah, I see. Competitive innovation. In terms of total pixels, the screen is actually smaller than the original Galaxy Note, even though it's listed as 5.5 inches. Samsung did this by using a 16 by 9 aspect ratio instead of the 16 by 10 in the original 5.3 inch screen. This makes the device narrower so people can more easily grip it with one hand. And while the pixel density of the HD Super AMOLED non-pentile screen is the same, the color reproduction should be more accurate. Under the hood, this is the first LTE device in the US that has the powerful 1.6 GHz Exynos 4 quad with the Mali 400 quad-core GPU. Check out Chip Wars 5 if you want to know why this is a big deal. It ships with a hefty 2 gigs of RAM to support true multitasking, not just app-to-app -app switching. It has 16, 32, or 64 gigs of storage while still supporting microSD expansion. Like most 2013 flagship phones, it has all the standard features. The main camera has an 8 megapixel backside illuminated sensor, but the front camera has an impressive 1.9 megapixel sensor. You get all the standard sensors, plus Samsung throws in a barometer. And for wireless, you get 4G LTE, Bluetooth 4.0, dual band Wi-Fi, but with the stock TouchWiz Nature user interface built in, you get a few unique features. Wi-Fi Direct lets you share data, sync, display information, and print documents directly to other Wi-Fi Direct devices without joining the same Wi-Fi network or hotspot. S-Beam uses NFC and Wi-Fi to transfer content and files to other S-Beam enabled devices. And with AllShare, you can search and play content to and from compatible devices, including TVs, PCs, and cameras. While it's a tad heavier, you do get a 24% better battery. It's the first Samsung device to launch with Jelly Bean and 50 gigabytes of Dropbox storage. Now I've got a question for you. When you first saw this phone, what was your first reaction? I thought, damn, that's a big phone. How do you use that thing? Let me just say that it's not about how many inches you have. It's how you use it. I see what you did there. So if you want to use your phone for more than just browsing and music, the Galaxy Note 2 should be near the top of your list. It's a device designed to unleash creativity, but let me just add, this monster needs two hands to reach its full potential. Sure, this phone is too big for some, but for millions of others, it will fit perfectly into their busy school and work lives. To find the best prices, please support the channel by clicking the links below. For US viewers, the good news is the Galaxy Note 2 is available on all five major carriers. But Samsung isn't done with the digital pen devices just yet. Stay subscribed as we cover an upcoming special event in late October.
Also, coming up in Phone Wars 2013, we're going to take a peek at the next Nexus device as soon as it's officially announced. And as always, thanks subscribers for your comments. Hit that like button if you would like to see a comparison video of all the phones announced so far. If you're a new viewer, please like, comment, share, and subscribe with email notifications to join My Next Appliance, where we try to keep up with all kinds of innovation and the companies behind it. You can also follow a Twitter account for news and good tech deals. By the way... Yeah? Did you subscribe yet? I'll subscribe from my future Galaxy Note 2.